All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. It's about time I do an update on these uh, Franken trees that I grafted together last year. So here we go. This is a sweet cherry on a tart cherry. As you can see, it's leafed out and has survived. The graft union looks pretty good. I don't know how you can see it there. And yeah, I think I'm actually going to take these uh, branches that are surrounding it and kind of just lop them off. It's not exactly the best time to be trimming a tree, but I had to wait till I knew that the graft would take. So it's just slice them off like that. And I might take these pieces and graft them onto one of my other trees. So I'll stick this in a bucket of water here in a minute. And you can see I actually got me a set of these grafting pliers. They, they work all right. Yeah, look at that. Sweet cherry growing on top of a bitter cherry. Well, not bitter, tart. Let's see, I left the tag on. Yeah. And actually, there was one more uh, that I grafted onto this one. There's the uh, choke cherry right here. And that one's leafed out as well. I don't think I'm going to cut any branches off of that. It's even flowering. Look at that. <laughs> Okay, so I've uh, come over here. I used to have the tart cherry sitting here, but I drug it over there because this uh, rose bush was kind of mauling it. But uh, the other cherries are still over here. You can see this is one that I grafted last year. The joint doesn't look particularly good, but it seems to have worked. This is all growing and has even flowered out. Very nice. Actually, this graft that I did up here, that one looks pretty nice. See, that's even grown quite a bit. Uh, I've been playing around with it since. I did this just uh, last week. I uh, stuck these two branches together and put one of the flowering cherries on there where the join was. I think I might undo this. I think that might have been a bad idea because now, now these branches are going to be stuck pretty close together and if this tree grows to be you know, more than four or five inches in diameter, the trunks are going to rub together. So. That's probably not good. I'll probably just cut that out of there. But it's an interesting experiment, and I think, yeah, flowering cherry there's uh, budding out, so that graft at least seems to work. It looks like we got ants in the tree. Now while I'm here, I'm actually going to take this uh, tart cherry branch I just cut off. I'm probably going to stick it on right about there. Let's see if I can show the process here. So I'm going to line this up. Right like that. Just lop it off. Now I'm left with a piece of wood that looks like that, which, with any luck, will fit this perfectly. No, that's about right. There. Stick that on, tape it together, put a bag over it, and I'll have a graft. Okay, bags on. A lot of people have asked me why I do this, and well, it's to conserve moisture. I live in a very dry climate, and things like this tend to dry out very quickly. So you see, I've got a wet paper towel wrapped around it. It's in the bag, it's mostly sealed. It's still open a little bit so air can get in. But the idea here is that it'll trap the moisture. But now I've got a greenhouse, right? It's gonna trap heat as well. So to keep it from getting too hot, I'm going to shield the sun with this paper bag here. And you can see I've cut some holes in it so light can still get through. But the idea is to get most of the sun cut out so it doesn't get too hot and burn it up. There we go. And uh, maybe a month or so I'll take that all off and hopefully it takes. So I'm not just doing cherry trees, I've also got this apple here. I haven't grafted anything onto it yet, but I do have some sticks that I can put on there. Uh, I've got a plum right here, which I've grafted. This is actually one that grew up from the yard. Let me up the brightness a little bit so you guys can see. But uh, to get it to grow true to type, what I've done is I've taken a branch off the mother tree and uh, grafted onto it. And it's 
seems to be doing all right. It's leafing out and everything. And if it does take and this survives, then I'll just uh, take this little sucker and break that off there. See, I've also got uh, a couple of little apple trees I grew from seed. These are going to get grafted as well. Maybe not this year, but definitely relatively soon. Uh, on the choke cherries, so this is the Canadian red choke cherry, which the leaves will actually turn red. I've actually grafted on another type of choke cherry right here. This is a native variety. These ones don't turn red. And uh, this one seems to be doing okay. I've already taken the bag off, as you can see, and the leaves have only slightly wilted. I'm also playing with a maple tree. So here's my maple, and I've grafted on a bunch of different varieties. Uh, a few of these are uh, red maple, which I'm kind of hoping works out because then I'll have a red and green tree. <laughs> Look, turkey eggs. Pick those up in a minute. So this is the choke cherry bush that I tried to graft sweet cherry to. See the sweet cherry graft is it's no longer there. Around here I had another one. Uh, it would have been, here it is, right there. See, it's just dead. Trying again with the uh, tart cherry. That one, is it least still green? Here's another of the choke cherry, sweet cherry grafts that I attempted. And this one actually grew together. You know, I was able to take the bag off and it leafed out and was it appeared to be growing. But it just didn't come back in the spring. I'm also trying again with the tart cherry up here. This is actually that branch that I cut off on camera. So you can see, reinforced it with a stick there. So far so good. I also left some branches just to, I'll cut them off if this is successful. So, hope you enjoyed this little update. I'll see you next time. Okay, so the process should be pretty straightforward. Basically the same as what I've been doing with the trees. Just uh, grab a shoot off of the potato or tomato. Find a potato that's about the same size. <laughs>